stream and it was quick this time. So um, we, we are a little early, but it's live streaming now. So, you know, you can wait a minute or two um, to start, but it is live streaming. Perfect. Just FYI. So I'm gonna, I'll go ahead and mute myself. Wonderful. Yeah, I think we'll just wait about two minutes, give everyone time to funnel in and then we'll start. Sounds good. All right, it looks like it is 1030, so we'll get started. Um, welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming. We are so excited to present this session titled Wikidata and the Sum of All Video Games, putting the link in video game metadata. The session is currently being live streamed to the LD4 YouTube channel and recorded and will be saved on YouTube for future viewing. Before we start, I would like to point out a few of the wonderful resources we have posted on the screen here, including the link to the official conference website, the Slack channel, the LD4 2023 YouTube videos, the Twitter hashtag LD4 underscore 2023, and more. This session will include about 20 to 25 minutes of presentation, followed by five to 10 minutes of Q&A. If you have questions you would like to ask our presenter, we encourage you to use the Slack channel or the raise hand button during the allotted Q&A time period. Our wonderful speaker for this session is jean frederic Bertolo. He has been a Wikipedia editor since 2005 and has worked with cultural institutions helping to upload their collections to Wikimedia Commons. He has been involved for 10 years in Wiki Loves Monuments, an international initiative to document built cultural heritage. Since 2008, he has worked on Wikidata to create and maintain integrality, a tool used to create dashboards of property coverage for given subsets of Wikidata. And now without further ado, I will turn the time over to John Frederick. Hello, thanks a lot for the introduction. Um, so yeah, I'm Jean Frederic. I usually go by Jean Fred, uh, and yeah, I've been working on Wikidata on the topic of video games for the last five years, and uh, I have a couple of thoughts that <laughs> I was uh, invited to share here uh, about video games. Um, so the first question, perhaps, I should answer, like, why should we care about video games? Is it just something that kids play or something? Uh, well, I feel like it doesn't need to be repeated, but uh, video games are now a major uh, cultural industry. Uh, there are more than 3 billion players worldwide. And um, the, um, I, I apologize, the, at least 200,000 to 300,000 video games have been ever published depending on how you count. Uh, you know, There's almost a million games just on itch.io. Flash game is like 150,000. App stores would be a million. So it, it depends how you count, but that's roughly the, the ballpark figure of what you mean by a video game is like 200,000 to 300,000. Um, and when it comes to video game metadata, my thesis is that the best, however you want to define that, video game metadata already exists. It's only spread out. And you need to know where to look, uh, which is a bit, you need to know. Uh, there's a myriad of databases uh, online of varying scopes and specialization. So for example, if you're interested in the um, credits of a game, like who made it, who was a director, who was a programmer, you probably can't go wrong with general purpose databases like Moby Games or GameFAQ. If you're interested in the age ratings, you've got official uh, content rating databases like BSRB in the US or the USK in Germany. Critical reception, you've got Metacritic. Uh, if you're interested in the completion time, you can go to howlongtobeat.com and you can know that, yes, indeed, it's going to take you 300 hours to beat Tears of the Kingdom or something like that. 
Um, if you're interested in speedruns, well, there is a, a website uh, from these communities like speedrun.com or testvideos.org. And if you're really interested in knowing what was the uh, track in the backdrop in that one level of India Entrance and Fate of Atlantis, and you want to know that it was a Opel Blitz, well, there is the Internet ca Game Card database, which is the most lovingly niche database I could I could find. Um, and various scopes. So, for example, if you're interested in visual novels, the one place to go it would be uh, VNDB, the Visual Novel Database. Uh, if you're interested in adventure games, well, it kind of depends which uh, language you speak. Adventure gamers would be the, the resource um, for the English speaking. Adventure Corner would be in German. Adventure Planet would be in Italian, and Planet Aventure would be in French, and so on and so forth. So we've got a lot of databases, but we've got no command identifier. Uh, there is no uh, command identifier for video games. Like there can be like the ISBN for books, uh, or like this for, for book editions. All these databases have various uh, conceptual differences. If you look at a page for a game on, on let's say, Moby Games, it's not the same thing as a game on um, uh, Game FAQ or on, on Giant Bomb. Uh, you also have uh, overrepresentation of English language. Uh, I have an example of that later. Uh, you got some blind spots if you want to, to phrase that charitably, or biases if you're a bit less charitable. And there's little cross linking between these two. So the example of the of representation of English, DDoR Wikidata tracks a lot of things, and among other things, it tracks video game databases themselves. So we track some 223 at the time of count this week, and like uh, over 100 of them were in English. Then we've got some German, some French, some Japanese, and then you've got a long tail of uh, of other languages. <clears throat> Uh, so, of course, this representation is probably not true. It's also our own biases, like my own biases, I guess. I only know about, I, I'm more likely to know about English language because that's the language I speak and of French and of German. Um, but yeah, if, if you look for information online about video games, you're more likely to find it in English. And I understand that a lot of people calling in will be from, uh, in this call, will be from the United States and or are likely to speak English because they're listening to this talk, which is English. But a lot of people don't speak English or cannot or read it with difficulty. So, there's there's a bit of overrepresentation even there. Um, and so blind spot, and I would like to give two examples here, uh, a blind spot of on platforms. So this machine is a Thompson T07, a computer that was produced in France in the uh, in the 1980s. Uh, so they were popular in France, like short story, because there was this national computing for all scheme, Plan Informatique to pour tous in, in original version. And I do remember one of these because uh, using one of these light pens that you use on, on the screen because there was one in my primary school. Um, now, quite a few databases know about that computer. Uh, so it's listed as a platform on, on Moby Games, Video Game Geek, UV List, ITDB. Uh, it's unknown to others. For example, GameFQs doesn't know about it. Uh, but there's a bit of a catch. There are actually two subfamilies of this uh, computer line, the MO and the TO, and they were incompatible. Uh, and yet, uh, several databases lump them together. Okay, oh, Moto computers, uh, UVL, VGG, Glitchwave, only mention one. And and that's bad because you said that a game was published on these platforms. Well, was it on one or the other? Some some were published on both, uh, and some were not. So it's not giving a, a lot of information. And then there are the games for that platforms. Uh, so Moby Games catalogs roughly 100 of them, uh, which is also what Video Game Geek uh, roughly has. And IGDB and Glitchwave have like 10, 1. Um, so it doesn't sound that bad for like this confidential French computers of the of the um, 80s. But if you head to dcmoto.com, which is a database specialized in software published on these computers, because there is a, like for everything online, there is a passionate community that will have made a, a website for it. Then you find over 600 games. It's like, whoa, OK, where, where does that discrepancy come from? And there's because there is a bit of a blind spot on this particular platform from the mainstream databases. Um, another example here, that's the Smacky. Uh, that's a computer that was manufactured in Switzerland in the late 70s. And I only know about it because I occasionally, occasionally work with researchers from Switzerland, which studies this platform. And all general purpose databases don't know about it. Only one, Giant Bomb, which is a bit of a, I was, I raised an eyebrow when I saw that. Like, Why do they, Why do they know about it? Not that I'm complaining. Um, so yeah, blind spots. Um, another one would be on regions. If you look at where games are released, it's on only ever three markets, right? It's Japan, the US, or North America, never quite clear if Canada is in there or not, and Europe. Europe, Western Europe, Eastern Europe, nobody knows. Um, so that's always like that. 
but is that really the case? Um, so another example here, this is a Sega master system. So the, the, the A-bit console from, from Sega. And I learned quite late in my life that actually it was huge in Brazil. Um, I, I looked up the number from Wikipedia. It sold 1 million copies, uh, units in, in Japan, 2 million in the US and, and 6.8 in Europe and 8 million in Brazil. So yeah, it was huge there. Um, and yet, if you look at uh, some databases like Giant Bomb or VGG and you look, look up a game fairly popular like Sonic or something, you may only find the release date in Japan, North America, and Europe, and you won't find the release date in, in Brazil. Um, so it's not a general statement. Actually, Moby Games, I was surprised to find it, does have the, the Brazilian release dates uh, for a lot of these games. Um, and I learned about that because the, the databases that are focused on the master system will have it. But yeah, not, not all databases will have that. Then there is a little linking between these databases. And some of that makes sense because some of the databases are made by commercial players. So they don't have a lot of incentive to link to their direct competition. Uh, there is a little bit of linking. So this is a graph I made uh, using the Wikidata query service. There's a, a link at the bottom of the slide. I actually created a Wikidata property. I had a Wikidata property created for the only purpose for me doing this, basically like maintenance link linking to for saying that the database linked to another database. And it's not so bad. So basically, these are um, a lot of community-driven databases, especially for 80s, 90s uh, retro gaming, so Commodore 64, Atari ST, Amiga. And I have to say, they, they link to each other very nicely. Um, and some of them also uh, link to, let's say, Wikipedia or general databases like Metacritic or things. So there is some of it, but that's only scratching the surface. It's really not that much when you're considering like the hundreds of databases that are out there. And also, most of these databases would not like uh, would would probably fail the uh, the linked open data principles. So I try to map to the like five star ratings. It doesn't it doesn't really map very well because websites and, and data is a bit different. But basically, the only one that would really like honor this this high principle would be the uh, the Media Arts database from the uh, Japanese um, cultural agency. So a bit of a national database which is published under CC BY for for .o and has a Sparkle endpoint that you can use. Um, another thing would be VNDB, the Visual Novel Database, which is published under free license. You've got data dumps, you've got a, a public SQL endpoint to run queries. Um, another example I didn't mention here would be the um, ZXDB, so the ZX Spectrum database, which is also open and, and powers a lot of different websites and applications around in the ZX Spectrum community. But most databases do not have a license statement, so we can only assume that it's full copyright. Uh, some have an API, which may or may not be publicly accessible. Um, yeah, at, at least if you're lucky, they all have URLs that are perennial and permanent, uh, but that's, that's about it. And there's Wikidata. Um, so I'm gonna, I, I think that a lot of people might be familiar with Wikidata in, in this call. However, I'm still gonna uh, run a bit through it. Uh, so there is a definition that I really like. What is Wikidata? It's a free, collaborative, multilingual, secondary database. Collecting structured data provides support for Wikipedia, the other Wikimedia wikis, and to anyone in the world. And let's unpack the statement a little bit. Uh, free, uh, it's public domain. It's uh, under CC0 public domain dedication, so you can do whatever you want with this data with absolutely no strings attached. Um, it's collaborative, which uh, it's made by people like you and me. I mean, definitely me. Uh, so it's a picture of our last conference we had in 2019, something like that in, in Berlin. Um, to be fair, in the video game databases world, it's not, uh, it's fairly common. A lot of community-driven databases are, well, community-driven. So Moby Games is made by just people who register and, and dedicate their time, most likely in a, in a volunteer capacity as well. Um, Wikidata is multilingual, so you can edit and, and read it in, in English, but you can read it in one of the 300 languages that Wikidata supports. Um, most of them you, you've never heard of. And yeah, and as I mentioned at the beginning, that's a topic very dear to me, that, um, that information should be uh, readable in, in various languages. It's a secondary database uh, by which means we collect information uh, that can be traced back to sources and uh, we put these sources to be able to, to clarify the provenance. So I put a screenshot here that the number of units sold for uh, control, the, the remedy came up a couple of years ago. And as you can see, it sold 3 million units at the time of uh, 24th of March, 2022. And you don't have to take my word for it because we have two references that, uh, that state it so. 
is collecting structured data. Uh, so everything on, on Wikidata is not free text. It's uh, it's property value statements. Uh, so it's more complicated. We've got qualifiers, etc. But that's, the idea is that it's, it's readable by humans and machines alike, and it can be reused and can be understood by machines and be reused in a lot of contexts, which pr uh, brings us to its reuse in the Wikipedias. That's the main, that's the raison d'etre, uh, as they say, uh, for Wikidata to exist, is to provide support for Wikipedia. Um, here I have two examples, uh, screenshots on the top left corner, you've got the info box or info box or these boxes that are on the, on the right of Wikipedia of many Wikipedia article in many language versions. And that the info box of uh, Elden Ring, the from software came up last year, um, in the Catalan Wikipedia. So the Catalan Wikipedia is a, a very active, but ultimately fairly small language community. And they leverage Wikidata a lot to, to like ease their maintenance burden, to, to help themselves. Um, and so everything you see here, whether it's the developers, the, the, the age rating, the awards, all of that is directly pulled from Wikidata uh, and displayed in the language of the Wiki, uh, which is so great. Um, and on the top right corner, you've got uh, an extract from the uh, English Wikipedia article about the Dark Soul series. And same thing, it's a, it's, a, it's a box that would be normally filled manually. Okay, oh, the first is a, the review scores on Metacritic. Uh, and that's actually completely populated by Wikidata. Uh, so the info box knows which article it is, and it's about a video game series. It looks up what are the games in that series, and it looks up the Metacritic's uh, rating and the references, and it generates the thing. And that's great because that, that alleviates work for the Wikipedians. Um, and finally, it's for everybody in the world, including you. So enter Wikiproject video games. So on that uh, URL, w.wiki slash 6an, you got uh, all the pages and sub pages uh, as an introduction. So as the short numbers, uh, Wikidata currently tracks 57,000 video games. Um, that's Q7889, something I will know uh, until the day I die, probably. Uh, 2,999 expansion packs. I'll probably create one just after this, just, just so it's a round number for a little while. We also track compilations, DLCs, game controllers, platforms, genre. We've got a pretty badass ontology of 379 genres, some of which are so niche, and magazines as well. And this is just a non-exhaustive list. Um, so something important to know about Wikidata items that they are interconnected. So here we've got an example of Star Fox, the um, 1993 uh, shoots them up on the SNES, very dear to my heart. And you can see like uh, it was published on the SNES and SNES is also a Wikidata item. And on itself, it says the manufacturer is Nintendo Q8093, which is also a Wikidata item and, and so on. So there is this interconnection, which is make it very powerful. Um, then how do we describe video games? So we've got over 70 properties that are currently used on the video games, uh, at least. Um, and they, they cover various topics. So you've got, for example, creators, who's developer, publisher, director, programmer, and a long, uh, a long tail of, of, of all the roles. Uh, you've got the gameplay, what is the genre, the, the game mode, is it multiplayer, single player, uh, game mechanics, does it have a double jump, does it have fast travel, etc. Um, we also uh, track the setting in which universe is set, um, uh, the narrative location or the period. And here that's also great because again, we can link to all the other items with data. So you can easily model that Assassin's Creed Syndicate is for example, is set in London, Q84, during the Victorian era, Q18 to 688, for example. Um, so how well items are described, well, we keep track of that. So this is a, a screenshot of a tool uh, we have that um, that I maintain, <laughs> small plug, uh, to keep track of how well described items are. Uh, and the bluer it gets, the better. Uh, so there are still a lot of things to do. For example, we've got 30,000 uh, games published on Windows, and only 60% of them have a genre uh, right now. So still a lot of things to do. Uh, there's always a tension between the depth and the breadth uh, of coverage. Sometimes as we extend the coverage, we have had more and more games. Um, they're globally less well described because we don't keep up uh, all the time. Uh, quickly, we also have relationship with all the works. So typically video games can link to be linked to a media franchise or I don't know, um, or is the media franchise Star Wars. Uh, we also link to series. Uh, also, uh, we use based on P144 to typically uh, link to remakes, remasters, clones. 
uh, you could also use a uh, plot expanding in uh, P5940 for P cool C cool side stories. Um, and that's a relation to other video game entities. Uh, so expansion packs are linked to video games uh, by the dedicated property, expansion off, same thing for mods, and we also have compilations. So compilations are games that ship other games. Um, to get back to the topic of linked data and, and uh, other databases. So we do a lot of alignments with other databases. Uh, so we create properties whenever we find a new database that sound, or looks interesting, then we create a property for it because why not? Uh, we use mix and match, which is a great tool that you can use to easily uh, match databases. If you haven't used it, I can recommend. Uh, sometimes we do block imports if we've got a very nice CSV, or we can just load it in something like OpenRefine or Quick Statements and add, um, add a lot of identifiers in one go. And we also do a lot of continuous identifier imports because we've got this mesh of databases that link to each other. If you connect the wiki data item to one point, then you can link to the other points. So typically, we link to query quickly. One of the most linked databases would be uh, Steam. And Steam itself is linked by another of databases. And we can do reverse lookups. And that's how we populate a lot of, a lot of databases. So right now, we have uh, yeah over 380 external identifier, identifier properties. That's not the number of databases, because for some databases, we have more than one identifier, for example, for the game, the company is a series. But that's still, if you compare to that graph I showed at the beginning of that existing linkage on the on the internet that exists between these databases, then what we're doing is basically unprecedented. There is no no such linkage anywhere. We're the only one who's doing it, um, and that's pretty cool, I think. So yeah, our objective is to become the linking hub for video games. That if you want anything, you can just use. Uh, Wikidata as a um, as a jumping point, as a hub point, whether you're interested in content ratings, online stores, emulation compatibility, um, various platforms, various technologies, such as VR games or accessibility concerns, uh, company series, franchise, game engines, anything, Wikidata can be your entry point. Uh, so this is the graph of the databases that we're currently linked to. So the most used one is the uh, IGDB and Mobi games, and you've got a very, 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 very long tail. Um, the, the the metaphor I often use to describe the role of Wikidata um, happens back to the uh, to, to the the concept of the mycorrhizal networks. So I don't know if you know I I, I learned that in my life that uh, in a forest trees communicate with each other uh, through fungi networks. Uh, so um, the, the the fungus attaches itself to the roots of the trees and creates an underground network that enables the exchange of nutrients and information between trees, and uh, that's been uh, nicknamed the wood white web. And I believe that Wikidata can be the underground fungus and the vast forest that is internet. I believe that with every identifier we're crossing, we're all weaving that underground network. And uh, in time, we will allow the databases to talk to each other and to exchange information and data and to make a true ecosystem of metadata. Uh, still, to not finish on two positive notes, some, some limits and challenges. Um, at the moment, we have more or less one Wikidata item per video game, depending on how you define a video game. And it's some, something that we inherited from the Wikipedias. Wikipedias are not going to make a difference between the, the PC version and the console version. Um, but sometimes it means that Wikipedias will conflate things, uh, like if two games have the same name and one was the, the, the handheld version tie into a, a bigger console release, are these the same games or not? On, on Wikipedia, they, they treat them in the same article, which makes sense. On Wikidata, we should split them up rough, uh, um, more than likely, and it's something that we're still we're still grappling with. Uh, we still have a limited ontology to describe games. I'm, I'm proud of the one we had, but we still we don't describe narrative genres. So a game, whether it's science fiction or fantasy, it's all lumped into the the, the gameplay genre. We also don't have anything for the visual style. Is it cell shaded or is it or even like 2D, 3D? Uh, what's the perspective is first person, third person, over the shoulder, um, the pacing, real time, turn by turn, uh, all that we, we don't model at the moment. And finally, we've got a fairly simplistic data models when it comes to edition version releases and compilations. And that's forcing us to do workarounds. For example, this is a screenshot of the publication dates of Final Fantasy VII. And yeah, we've got eight statements for this was this date, but only in, and we had qualifier statements only in Japan, only on the PlayStation published by Square. And this is just a little bit of a silly workaround. It, it works, uh, it's work-ish, uh, but it prevents us from answering questions. So here I could I come up with a couple of questions that we currently cannot answer very well. For example, uh, what um, Game Developer Choice Award nominated, it's, it's an award in the video game world, 
nominating him, can I play on the switch? Well, if you run that query with data, you can, and you get answers. But for example, I will not get Portal or Portal 2 because they were published as a compilation on the switch, and then that would not come up. Um, so there are actual problems, are actual questions that we might want answered that, that holds us back. So what better data model could, could we use? Very quickly, I'm finishing in two minutes. Um, so don't take my word for it. Apparently, the, the academic literature on the topic says that uh, Ferber is not uh, is not good enough for video games. That video games are uh, too complex of a, of an object for Ferber uh, or FLBR, as, as I like to call it. Um, so apparently, we can use that. And there there are things that have been sort of in the in the literature. So this is the video game metadata schema that's uh, been designed at the University of Washington. And I like it a lot, and it it's um, it makes a difference between the game, the platform is released, the local releases. So the version in Japan might be different than the version in the US. And if you instantiate it, uh, so that's an example that was uh, done by the, the Digger project from Germany. Uh, it becomes very complicated. Just for Dark Souls, you, it has eight different editions on six different platforms and releases in three different continents. And is that where we want to go? because that would make things more powerful, but that would, might also make them more difficult for the Wikipedias. So there are, there are definitely uh, trade-offs. Um, so where do we want to go from there? We want to be this one-stop shop for researchers, at least I want that. Um, we could be the metadata backbone for libraries, so we don't have to reinvent the wheel, um, but we want to, to stay useful to the Wikipedias as well, so we can just leave them behind. Um, so how can you help? Well, you can provide use cases, like how would that be useful for, for library cataloging? How would, could Wikidata work for that? Uh, please challenge the data model. Where does it just not work or is not good enough? And yeah, consider le leveraging Wikidata pool efforts and you don't have to take my word for it. Uh, so here I've linked the, the Pixelvetica report on video game preser preservation in Switzerland that was released last year. And that report was encouraging institutions like archive and libraries to pull their efforts through Wikidata uh, to share the workload. Yeah, and hopefully one day this is what we can get. Having thank you Sparkle, but our data is in another database, and that won't be a problem because we can do it from anywhere. And with that, I'm done, and I'm happy to take questions. Wonderful, thank you so much, John Fred, for that wonderful presentation. Now we will have a brief Q and A. Um, let's first see what questions have come in on the Slack channel, which is being moderated by Huda Khan. All right, so um, other than everyone just uh, loving the content and being very um, appreciative of that, we did have one question. Uh, the beautiful color-coded table that you showed, I think this was with regards to the, the different coverages of the properties, um, that was generated using integrality. So that was the question? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so uh, it's... Uh... I can paste a link in the in the Slack channel integrated to photo. Am I screen still sharing? Yes. Yeah. So it's it's a small uh so use the idea with integrality to have a better. Yeah, I think there's um the link there is a link there that's uh Christine had posted Wikidata <laughs> tools and then integral. So maybe yeah. you can check it out on Slack. Right? Yeah, okay. the idea is that you select a subset of Wikidata, whether it's albums, red pandas, paintings, British MPs, whatever, you slice it under dimensions and then you describe how it should be described, and then it just it runs Sparkle queries for you to describe like how well things are described. I also take bug reports for it. If no questions. Um, I don't see too many questions right now, but maybe there are people in, in the Zoom who might. Oh, uh, one question just came up. Um, I'm still pretty new to Wikidata. Does it have similar issues with works versus expressions? Right. Um, so works expression, that's, I guess, that's the, uh, the WEMI model works expression manifestation items. Uh, that's, I think that's the Ferber model, if I'm not mistaken. Um, People in the in the room probably know more about like you know uh, deep frame FRBRU and all these things than, than I do. Um, it might at least or some some might. Um, so yes, uh, except that as I said, the the consensus that you cannot really stop video games in the work expression manifestation item uh, because you've got that uh, multi layered 
So what is a game? <laughs> it all starts there. Uh, the definition that I usually go for that I learned from other people would be, if you and I talk and we say we play the same game, do we agree or not? Um, and we can agree that we play the same thing even if you played it on Xbox and I played it on PlayStation or something like that. Um, so that's the work, and that's usually the uh, that's the level at which we work oh, on Wikidata. That's that's what we that's what we're doing, but that's what's also holding us back. And we have to probably will have to split the, the data model in having things of more about yes, what would be the expression? But for example, there's the for Wikidata for video game would be the platform realization. Uh, which would be which the, the platform on which it was released. So the Xbox version is different from the PS3 version, but you also have where it was published. So a game would be published in Japan and the US, and then you got the version, the US version on PlayStation, also different from the US version on Xbox, which is different from the Japanese version on PlayStation, but different from the Japanese version on Xbox. And then you've got editions. So different, like more like distribution packages, uh, a game might be published as like the standard edition, limited edition, an edition with some DLC included, et cetera. So you've got like this, this levels, which makes it a bit, a bit harder to, to grok than, than work expression. Um, maybe we have time for one last question, uh, which is a good one. Um, how can we contribute? Are there specific areas like genre that need more support? Uh, yeah, genre would be a good example because it's a little bit of a mess. Um, I, I will paste in the Slack, the, the graph of our genres. It's a, it's it's a mouthful. Um, I everything. If, if you're into data modeling, and you can think of because I I assume that there are a lot of catalogers in this call, and you can and you have that expertise, but might also be about video games. Then you have a different perspective than we have as volunteers, and you can bring that to the table. Because I'm telling you, like, oh yeah, you can definitely use Wikidata for cataloging video games in your institutions, but I have actually no idea. I need to take your word for it. Um, so I think there is. Uh, Yes, push using Wikidata internally because I don't think it makes sense that you try to maintain a, a metadata database of video games on your own. So we should be pulling efforts and I think Wikidata is your best bet for that, but I'm biased. Um, so yeah, push that internally. I think that's it. Wonderful. Um, thank you so much everybody for your participation. Um, and thank you again, John Fred for that incredible presentation. That just about oh. wraps up this session. Um, remember again to check out the conference Slack channel and all of the other resources provided by the 2023 LD4 conference and have